is the time I spend with Jesus. Sweet is the presence of the Lord. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Good evening. I'd like to share with you from the book of Ephesians, our position in Christ. Paul says in Ephesians 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, hmm, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, wow, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Hallelujah. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with this Holy Spirit of promise. Wow. And that's to every believer a follower of Christ has life only in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. In Christ means that the believer is now united with Jesus Christ through a personal relationship and lives within the realm of his character and influence and his purposes. We are to live for Christ's purpose. That means our union with Christ is our new, we, we come into a new environment. Of, uh, and uh, Everything the believer does is in context now to our relationship with Christ Jesus and should reflect his influence and his purposes. We're not here for ourselves. We're here to bring glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so in Christ, the Christian is constantly aware of the Lord's presence and companionship because the relationship is so deep that we understand who we are in Christ Jesus. This personal unity and companionship with Christ is the most important thing in the Christian life and experience. And that comes as a gift through faith. And so when we look at these scriptures, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Saints, if we don't understand our position in Christ, what we have received from being adopted into the family of Christ, what we have been given as a down payment, that's what Paul talks about in Ephesians 2, about we have been given the Holy Spirit as a, a down payment, a guarantee. We have received an inheritance called the Holy Spirit that guarantees we're going to make it in. But guess what? We're not looking for fire insurance just to escape hell. We're looking to be, bring glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ by the way we live, by the way we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, direct us, and protect us as we go along this path called life. Hallelujah. Paul talks about the great mystery in the church. Well, the real church is the body of Christ and believers are members of that sacred body, which Christ is the head. And so we have to look at the church, which is the ecclesia. That means the call out assembly. We are called out from the world and to assemble ourselves with the other saints as we bring glory and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. Our calling, our position have been planned and worked out by God the Father, 
Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit before the foundation of the world. Now that's something. God already had a plan. I know a lot of folks want to look at that. Well, Adam didn't messed up. No, God knew what the enemy was going to do. God wasn't somewhere asleep. God knew. That's why Adam, where are you? He already knew. But what God is trying to challenge us to do is understand what we have received as being children of the Most High God. Our position in Christ puts us in the best place ever. I know a lot of folks want to look at what's going on in the world. We, we look at the political arena and we are all upset that, wow, look at what's going on. So I know some of the famous words, is, well, the, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. The devil is a lie. Our position in Christ puts us in the best place. Yeah, it seems like it's the worst of time, but we're living in the best of time. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up above all of these things of the world. We have an opportunity to glorify Christ in all we do and say. We have a chance to trust in the word. Don't lean on our understanding, but in all our ways, when we acknowledge him, he will direct our paths. Hallelujah. I want to share something with you, what Paul talks about here in Ephesians 1. There's nine spiritual blessings that we receive as children of God. First of all, he says, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. When we come to Christ, he said we received all spiritual blessings. If we go to 2 Peter 1, he talks about according as his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness or to the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that we might be partakers of the divine nature, escape the corruption that's in the world through lust. And Paul said, beside this, start adding to your virtue. Patience. I mean, we just got to keep adding. Saints, we are not to stop because God, God called us out. The, the ecclesia is the called out ones. We've been called out, but we don't just sit down. Now it's time to get busy trusting in what we have received in Christ Jesus. Paul also said we have been chosen to be holy. Romans 12, 1 said, uh, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You surrender your body as a living sacrifice. That's what God, for all God's done for you, he asks us to surrender our bodies, give our life to him, let the Holy Spirit take control, and then we'll become what God called us to be. Everybody know uh, Isaiah 50, 50, when he said, 20, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 11. I know the plans I have, but then we said, but when you seek me, See, we got to get 12 and 13 in there too. When you search for me with all your heart. Saints, we just got to understand what we've been given and what God calls us to do. Then Paul said, we've been predestined to be sons of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, I know a lot of folks try to say, well, we're all created in God's image. You're right. We're created in his image, but that don't make us sons and daughters. What makes us sons and daughters is we have received that gift of the Holy Ghost. In Romans 8, 14, say, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons and daughters of God. And so when we let the Holy Spirit do his job, when the body of Christ understand our position, we'll start to push back the forces of darkness. We'll be able to stand in the gap, intercede for others, and then we'll start taking back the ground that the enemy have taken from us. Also, Paul said, we've been made us accepted in God. Don't you know as a child of God you've been accepted by what Jesus did on the cross. It's not about you trying to earn it. It's not about you doing some good stuff. It's not about you trying to works. That's what James talks about. He said works don't get it but faith without works is dead. That means my faith is going to lead me as I follow the Holy Spirit to do the thing God called me to do. Saints, it's time for the body of Christ to get this thing together before we Come, Christ come back and take the body home. Also, we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that Christ's blood, for those who accepted Christ, we have been redeemed by his blood? That means I got an inheritance. I got a part in the body of Christ that no man can ever take from me. What God did on the cross when I received Christ as my Lord and Savior, that settles it. And all I got to do is continue to walk according to his precepts. Amen? Now, he's abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence. That means the Holy Spirit. James said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. So let's 
Keep the wisdom that God gives us. Let's use it because guess what? God calls us when we go back to Deuteronomy. He said we are to be the head and not the tail. We are to be above and not beneath. Blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Blessed in whatever we put our hand to do. Saints, when we realize what we have, what our position is in Christ, we could go tell a dying world that Jesus is still in his soul saving business. He's still redeeming the lost. Hallelujah. He could deliver old drug addict like me. He could deliver anybody. Hallelujah. Christ is still blessing and re redeeming those lost things. Remember when Jesus said in the gospel said, I didn't come to save those who are well. I came to save the sick. Hallelujah. And I was one of those who were sick and lost, but God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, came in and saved my soul. He redeemed me. Hallelujah. Now he's made known to us the mystery of his will. Now, when Paul talks about the mystery of his will, the prophets beforehand was always prophesying about uh, a savior, a redeemer coming. But the mystery was that it was not just going to be the Jews, it was going to be the Jews and the Gentiles. See, that's what happened when we go to Acts, when uh, James in Acts 15, James, they was, you know, they was trying to get the Gentiles to, well, you know, talk about circumcision. No, 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 no. James said, well, look, let's not put any other burden on the people. Just abstain from eating stuff with blood, and there's a few things, but let's keep focused because Christ came to redeem mankind. It just wasn't for the Jews only. So now we received it. We've been grafted in, and Romans 11 talks about us being grafted in. The, the Jews sort of missed it, and so out of their jealousy, God said, all right, I'm going to take it to the Gentiles because they didn't receive it, and so now we've been grafted in because they didn't want to, but now we are all seeds of Abraham. Hallelujah. Thank God for our inheritance in Christ Jesus and all the blessings and promises that he gave Abraham belongs to us. Now, we are the body of believers, and God gave us an inheritance. Hallelujah. And uh, also, we have been sealed with the spirit of promise. Don't you know when God said we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit? When we accept Christ, now I ain't talking about church folk. There's a lot of folk just go to church, come back home, go to church, come back home. They're just empty. But I'm talking about true born again believer. Jesus said in John 3, if a man, except a man be born again, he can't even see the kingdom of God. He told Nicodemus, except one be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. And so when we've truly been born again, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's why he told the disciples on the, uh, uh, go on the day of Pentecost, y'all just tarry here till you be endued with power from on high. Wait on the promise. The promise was the Holy Ghost. And once we've been sealed with the Holy Ghost, we have something that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. When we understand our position, that we've been blessed in the heavenly realm. Come on now, that's why Jesus said, pray our Father, not as it is in heaven, be on earth as it is in heaven. That means God has blessed us in heavenly realm. That means above all principalities and powers, we have the authority, we have the power to, tra to, to trample over the enemy because of what Jesus did and what we receive when we accepted him as Lord and Savior. We don't have to walk around being fearful. We don't have to walk around being anxious because we know what we have as a child of God, but it's time for the body of Christ to start walking in the power and in the victory that Christ gave because on the cross he said it's finished. When we said we're waiting on Jesus, no, no, Jesus is waiting on us. He's waiting on the body of Christ to get in line, hallelujah, because what he did on the cross completed everything the Father sent him to do. Hallelujah. So now we just got to walk in our integrity, walk in honor, walk in the, the victory that Jesus has already given us as children of the Most High God. All Christians should know their calling above anything else. Hallelujah. All the promises and blessings in Christ still is for us today. He didn't stop those blessings. Bless going out, bless coming in. Moses told him, so now, if you do all this, according to all this written, God will bless you. These blessings will come on you and overtake you. Have you been overtaken, hallelujah, by the power of the Holy Spirit? Have you just been take, overtaken by God's spiritual blessing? See, a lot of times we get it all mixed up. We think it's all about physical, financial blessing. But God blesses us with things, just a spirit that, of joy, of peace, and love that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. Hallelujah. And so we have to understand that we are still the body. And what 
God promised way back then on the, when Jesus died on the cross, his promises even from old time, what he promised Abraham is still alive today. God don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. And so these blessings are the pure doctrine of the gospel and the full grace and the gift of the spirit is necessary for us to be and do the work that God called us to do. Hallelujah. God has predestined us, all of us, as children to be adopted into his family. But whoever becomes a child of God is left up to each individual. Predestined means that he set a plan up, but guess what? If we don't accept the plan that he set, we won't receive the blessing. That means our position for those who accepted Christ, we have something different. We have something that can encourage the world. We could, we could share the good news because we know what he's done. Predestinated means, don't mean that God determines ahead of time who's going to be spiritually saved and who will be eternally condemned. But through, though he knows all that will take place, he don't cause us or make forces himself on us to accept his son. That's the key. God ain't going to force us. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman, y'all. When Christ came, the Holy Spirit came after he went back. And so now what we receive in Christ is so rich that we just have to learn how to walk in it. Redemption, we've been redeemed. That means to be redeemed relates to being rescued or set free. And so it also means to buy back or pay a ransom. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He paid a ransom for us. And so now, what are we going to do? Learn your position in Christ. All the spiritual blessings in Christ is yours and mine as children of God. And what we have to do is learn that it's not by works. It's all by grace that we've been saved, as Paul said, through faith. And it's a gift. Learn to accept the gift and then know who you are. Know what comes with being a child of the Most High God. When we look at the word of God, we should be to the praise of his glory, what Paul says, who first trusted. So now when we receive our inheritance, let's start walking in the thing that God have called us to do. God didn't call us to be fearful, but Paul said, don't be anxious, don't be worried about nothing. But in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. When we come, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. And so when we learn that we have this gift, let us start walking in victory. We got the victory. We know we the read the end of the book. We win, saints. Hallelujah. And so let's walk in victory. Let's start walking like we are the head and not the tail. Let's start walking and telling folks that, hey, Job said, though he slay me, yet would I trust him. Job understood that God, blessed be the name of God, because God got me. I don't care what comes my way, come hell or high water, I am still got the victory because Paul said, whether to go on and be with Christ or stay here, I'm still with Christ. If I stay, if I go, I'm still going to see him face to face. So hallelujah, my victory is already, my battle is already won. It's already been set. I just got to walk it out day by day. Hallelujah. But I got the victory because the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, is our strength. We, the body of Christ, got to learn how to have a little more joy, have a little more peace. Get that peace that passes all understanding because the world is always going to push. Guess what? That's what they'll do. Evil People, evil communication, corrupt good manners. We just got to understand we can't fellowship with everybody out in the world. Some folks just aren't good for you. Hallelujah. Once we become born again, Paul don't say we don't go and hide, but there's just some folks we can't hang with no more, y'all. There's some folks that we got to cut off, and I don't care if he's in family. Sometimes they don't can be your worst enemies. Sometimes there's things that goes on that we got to separate ourselves from. Hallelujah. So let us be followers of Jesus. Let us start walking in victory. Let us know that who we are and what we have received in Christ. And so we've been redeemed. Paul said now in Romans 6, he said, now we have, don't, don't, don't follow that old way. But he says now, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we should also live with Christ. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more, death have no dominion over him. So guess what? It ain't going to have no dominion over us. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but he lives, he lives unto God. That's our position now. 
we have his spirit. Let us live as we're living unto God. So Paul said, now, don't let sin reign. Don't let sin take over. Guess what? Because we got a new nature now. Yes, God didn't take the old nature out, but guess what? Those who follow after the spirit, let us continue to walk after it. Because when we walk after the spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of our flesh. Yeah. God has given us something so great, something that we need to understand. Yes, we're living in uh, some rough times today. But guess what? I know who's in charge. God is. It's not the White House. Hallelujah. It's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. And I know that in him we live, we move, we have our being. And so it's in Christ that we have the victory. It's already been won. We don't have to worry about all of this stuff that's going on. Yes, it's time to get active. God wants us to be involved. But when Paul talks about in Ephesians 4, until we all come to the unity of faith. Paul is saying, I don't need everybody to try to think the same, but let us focus on the main thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Let the body start coming together. Romans 12 talks about there's many members, but one body. The hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. You got a different function than I got. But let's do our part. When the body of Christ come together, start, everybody start doing what they've been called to do. Stay in your lane, I stay in my lane, but we're going to build this body of Christ together and we're going to come and function as God called us to do. We're going to put the devil on the run when we get this uh, denomination of stuff out of the way. When we got, we got too many idiosyncrasies that keeping the body of Christ divided, let's come together as one in Christ because Paul says there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who's above all, through all and in us all. Hallelujah. So when we get that down as the body of Christ, all of us going to start standing together as one. Hallelujah. God said, let the wheat, Jesus told him, let the wheat and the tares grow up. Then he's going to separate. Sometimes we get caught up in things that shouldn't be. Christ is not divided, Paul said. And so we need to quit looking and putting folks down. But let's see, what do we have in common? How could we come together and function as the body of Christ and be on one accord? I like what Paul talks about when he sent the letter to Ephesus. That meant there was a whole community of people in Ephesus. It just wasn't one church. It was that community that gathered together. The book of Colossae, Paul talked, sent that letter to the community. They was coming together from house to house having church. And once we get that down, Saint, once we start understanding our position as one another, there's so many one another's in the Bible. Paul talks about encourage one another, pray for one another, help one another. That's what the body of Christ is. That's what our position is, to become one in Christ Jesus. When we become that one, what God called us to do, we're going to start seeing things change. God, we're a change agents, y'all, because of the Holy Ghost in us. That's what God has commissioned us to do. Go forth, share the good news, and make disciples. Not just church folk, but make disciples. Teach them that they may go forth. Because, see, here's what we got to understand. Making the disciples mean we raise them up to send them out. Sheep beget sheep. So it's going to take the, the people in the church to go bring others in. Now, once they bring them in, we as pastors, we do the cleaning. Hallelujah. We show them how to start walking this thing. But see, too many times we're depending on the pastors to do all the work. No, the body. In Ephesians 4, Paul said, the apostles, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor and teachers is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. And so when we equip the body to go forth, that's going to help make our job easier when the body starts functioning as the body should be. Your position is to be a disciple, then go make other disciples. And as we re reciprocate this thing, we'll see God moving. We'll see Satan on the run and we'll start taking back the land that the devil has told us. A lot of it he didn't steal. We just gave it up because the body of Christ got too sidetracked. As we go back, there's issues that we are fighting for now that we should never have given up that ground. Hallelujah. But we still got victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so I look at sin. We was captive, but Christ set us free. Now, 
Paul said, don't go back into bondage again. Once you've been set free, don't go back into bondage again. But walk as a child of God, hallelujah, knowing that Christ has redeemed us. And so when we said that Paul talks about it, that those things that we struggle with, we shouldn't always struggle. Because guess what? He's saying now, there's no condemnation for us who are in Christ. That's another blessing we receive. We're not condemned. Yet the Holy Spirit convicts us to get us on the right path. But guess what? There's no condemnation. So why beat yourself up? You know what? I think the body, a lot of times we got it mixed up because we think because we're in Christ, we ought to not make no problem, not make no mistakes. But guess what? Romans 3 said we all sin and come short of the glory of God. There's none right, no God one. We've all sinned and gone our own way. But guess what? He says the Lord have laid on Christ the iniquity of us all. Christ redeemed us. He took our punishment. And so now we don't have to try to work or do some good thing. Let the Holy Spirit be leading and guiding and the works we'll do will be pleasing to the Father. And so now too many times we want to get all upset because, oh, I blew it. I messed up. I knew I shouldn't have been. You know what I say? According to whose word? Whose standard did you set up? Was that your standard? Because we are not sinless, we just sin less. God don't call us because we are in this, I call it an earth suit. Long as we're in this body, there's going to be some problems. There's going to be some issues. But understand your position in Christ. You have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. And so let's start walking in that. Let's start walking in victory. Know who you are in Christ. And so Paul said, I don't cease to give thanks for you because I know the gift that God has placed in you. And that's my prayer is that we will continue to walk according to God's precept. Let us start walking in victory because we have been blessed with all the spiritual blessings in heavenly realms. Christ said, Paul says in Colossians, set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Saints, it's time for us to change our focus. Quit looking at the mistakes you made and start looking at what you received as an inheritance as a child of God. God, Jesus put a down payment when we receive the Holy Ghost is your down payment. You have been redeemed. You've been bought with a price. You're not your own. So let us start walking like what we receive. God has given us the best thing. He gave us his son. And now as a body of believers, let us return and start walking according to what God has said. Our position is to go tell others about Jesus. Hallelujah. And so if there's someone out there today who really needs a savior. Lord, I ask that that you would just touch and anoint them. And if this is your prayer, you, you, you feel you've been convicted, say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me. I want to accept your atoning sacrifice. I know I've been a sinner. I've been walking my own way. But God, I want to go in your way today. I want to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. I, I repent of all of my wrong. Lord, take away anything that's not of Christ. Remove it because I want to be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. And sweet is the way he gently takes me by the hand and helps me down the road that leads to home. Yes, he helps me down the road.